as game masters, we put a lot of ourselves into our games. Our time, our money, our energy, and likely hours of other resources into crafting and running the game or system of our choice. And that means we also fall into habits to make our lives easier or harder. And one habit I've done in the past is over prepping for my TTRPG. And especially when I was first running DD 5e, which was the first game I ever ran, I would spend 10, 20 plus hours preparing for a session. And long story short, that didn't last for long. But how do we best deal with over prepping and why is this such an issue for TTRPG enjoyers? So today viewers, I'll be discussing how to deal with over prepping in DD and TTRPGs alike, as well as what over prepping might look like for you. Before we can even do that, we need to answer what is over prepping. You might prepare an entire city, but your players decide to investigate the forest outside of the city due to some minor detail you gave maybe 10 sessions ago. So, over prepping is when you prepare more content than what your players see and or deal with in game. This could look like preparing maps, encounters, complex plots, dialogue for NPCs, info tables, and other miscellaneous information, only for your players to literally not engage with it at all. But I'm sure some people might be asking, but I enjoy over prepping, do what works for you. And my friendly neighborhood stranger, you are entirely correct. Do what is best for you. But I also need to be realistic. Is that something you can sustain? And ask yourself, when you get into the rut of over prepping, what is the end goal in doing all of that work? Because that's the issue of over prepping. It's not the fact that you are doing game prep. It's the fact that you're doing so much and not seeing the rewards for that in game. Because if you're writing all this content, then there's a chance that you could be using your time for something more valuable to improve your GM skills and to not cause you as much stress. Maybe that could be reading other source books and other TTRPGs for inspiration. It could be watching, reading, or doing other things outside of thinking about D&D and other TTRPGs. Or it could even be reading other GM and player blogs, videos, and posts on specific GM tools and tricks. So you've answered just two primer questions. Now it's the question of how to stop over prepping. And unfortunately, this isn't a simple answer because over prepping has flexibility. There's no one way to stop over prepping. For example, running a successful Starfinder or Pathfinder game will look a bit different in terms of prepping than say Fiasco or Power by the Apocalypse game. Especially if some players love tactical combat and crunchiness in their games while others prefer more narrative driven games or maybe there's some players who are very new to TTRPGs. Your prep and approach are going to be a bit different. So first idea, maybe try not prepping at all or very little. Not prepping at all might depend on what you think prep is. Do you consider writing of any kind for your game session to be prep? Or do you consider map making and creating hexes and tables as prep? For the suggestion, don't do what you usually do to prep because technically any preparation would be considered prep. This is getting confusing and we're getting off track. What matters is that you do less prep than what you usually do. This might be more difficult if you do not have proactive players, however. If you have passive players who don't really react to most situations and are kind of waiting for the plot to happen, then this idea of not prepping at all will kind of suck because your players will just sit around and wait for stuff to happen. If you do have passive players, you're going to need to prep action drivers since these players are not as likely going to hook to action or the narrative or interact with the world. And this kind of prepping is really the bare minimum. You present passive players with challenging situations where they need to act in some way, shape, or form. Maybe you're stuck slogging through a boring old marketplace of another time where you're searching for random magic items in this generic fantasy city. So to spice things up, you show that a group of bandits start to rob a nearby store blind. This presents actions for players to overcome or deal with. Do the players run away? Do they go after the bandits? Do they talk to the shopkeeper? You don't need to prep much aside from maybe the shopkeeper's name and maybe the items they stole. I say try not prepping at all or do very little and see how that works for you. And let me know down below in the comment section if you give that a try. But 
Not prepping at all or prepping very little can be daunting, especially for new GMs. And doing the bare minimum can be annoying as well if players pick up on that. So, the middle ground is to prep situations rather than a plot or a strict A, B, C story. And note, I learned about this via the Alexandrian, which is a great TTRPG blog that all GMs and players should reference if you're looking for great dopes. Anyhow, the problem with prepping plots or a story, quote unquote, is that your players might, and will likely not, follow these plot points. For instance, you're playing a high fantasy game. The heroes will chase down the evil noble who will have been poisoning the water supply in a local hamlet. After the heroes chase off the noble, the noble will run off with some hired mercenaries and house themselves in their personal castle, deep from the mountainous region of your world. The adventurers must journey through the forest infested with monsters and fend off ferocious beasts in order to finally take down the noble. As the great Alexandrian blog post states with plots like this, what you're looking at is a chain of potential failures. Each of these points is heavily designed for a specific and expected outcome. This can lead to railroading and well, while railroading isn't inherently bad, Forcing players onto a path they do not want to go and limiting their choice and options will be frustrating if players notice that. An alternative is to present situations, a series of circumstances that occurred and see how players react and respond accordingly. Here's a good example of that. Your players are exiting from a nearby cave. As they go to refill on water and rations, they notice that all the nearby streams are polluted with this purple liquid. As they investigate, a dire wolf emerges from the forest. It is a dog tag and has the name of a noble on it. The dire wolf rouses at them as more emerge from the forest. This is a situation because it presents a challenge in a circumstance, as well as some hooks that the players can investigate. What caused the pollution of the water? What is the dog tag that the dire wolf has? Who is the person nobility? How will the players proceed? And if they don't, then the situation with that pool of water gets worse. This situation escalates, and you can have that escalating pollution become a real problem for the players if they continue to avoid it. And that's the power of preparing situations rather than specific plots. You don't need to figure out every specific detail. You just need to present situations and see how your players respond rather than feeding them from A to B to C. Because especially veteran players will pick up on if you are pushing them into a plot. Another idea is to when you're presenting situations is to give opportunities for investigation so that you have continuous plot points and things flowing in your game. Maybe you're running a mutants and mastermind superhero game and your team of heroes finish defeating some basic grunts. Afterwards, they find a letter indicating plans for a big bank heist being organized by a crystal mastermind deep within the city. See how in this example, they finish off a baddie but they find more information allowing them to further get into the plot. It doesn't allow for your game to stall while you figure out, oh crap, what do I do next? You immediately have an idea of what your players might do next or not. Ultimately, whatever decision they make, that's okay. Of course, not all events need to be social events. They can be combat or mystery. Maybe a group of hired mercs attack the players at night. If they win or lose, reveal that the people who hired the mercenaries have a bounty on them. So keep giving events and multiple until players take one. And after they get interested, challenge them accordingly with whatever they might want. And you also don't need to create the event yourself. You can use random generators or tables to create easy events. Seriously, just go and Google D100 events and you'll get a plethora of events, encounters, and tables for your GMing and player needs. Or you can use one shots or modules as ways to spur your own inspiration and also to give your own brain a break if you haven't actually prepared anything. Seriously, you don't know how many times I've just pulled a module from an entirely different system or an entirely different book and just plugged in what I saw for my specific group. And finally, with events, you do not need to complicate them because players certainly and likely will. Present the event and see how they respond rather than forcing a specific pathway slash answer out of them. For instance, if the players choose to negotiate with the ragtag team of bandits that you were expecting to be killed, then just let them. Let them do that. Lead into what the players are doing. Don't complicate with loads of exposition or name PCs or specific locations. When the question from the players come, 
then you give it. And you can answer by giving the players challenges to figure out the answer or by just giving the information if it's relevant or it doesn't require a challenging situation or role. And when in doubt, maybe it's just all right to ask nicely to follow what you prepared. This should not be controversial, but it can be a bit weird to ask your players to follow the content you wrote. But if they're your friends and loved ones and some people you are comfortable with, then that's okay. Maybe you are not comfortable not prepping at all, and you are uneasy on creating multiple events to give players to latch onto. Just ask your friends to follow the plot you prepared. Your friends should understand, especially if you're a new GM or do not have the energy to work on the fly of your seat. These games are meant to be fun, first and foremost, and if they don't listen to you and are being rude about it, maybe you as a GM should consider finding new players and most certainly new friends. And who knows, maybe after all of this conversation, you're still of the mind that I like to over prep. And if that's how you still feel, heck yeah. That is your fun and your time used for what you want to do. I can't force you to do anything you don't want to do. For me, I don't like over prepping. I don't like spending 20 plus hours preparing for my game sessions. But some people genuinely do enjoy world building and all of that. But what do you think? Do you think over prepping is much of an issue as I think it is? Or do you think there is something else that GMs really should be more aware of? Let me know down below in the comment section, as always. You know what you should also be aware of? Six player habits and GM habits that are green flags. And in fact, I did a great collaboration with TrueSight over at this video if you're looking to learn more to improve your GM and player habits. And as always, I'm your average everyday queer host, Lurdy Disposition. Y'all have an awesome day. Ciao!